everybody I want to show you something here um, kind of like a bit of a chart that I made up you know uh, kind of helped me with some things um, <clears throat> so anyway I'll explain so what we have here is the uh, book of the law and uh, and of grace after the New Testament um, and see this whole system of law here and that's concerning Genesis to Deuteronomy and um, also we have a Joshua 1 8 it says um, and if you've seen my other videos you see what it said it says thy word shall not depart from thy mouth this book of law shall not depart from thy mouth uh, 1491 is whenever Moses um, started writing the book of the law um, whenever God let him know to do so as a memorial and um, so uh, that's what he started doing 1451 that's whenever in Joshua 1 a says they book this book of law shall not depart from thy mouth uh, there are indications to show the age of this book of the law that Moses wrote when we look at um, 2nd Chronicles 17 9 I think uh, Jehoshaphat um, had you know Levites reading it out and everything and then we have a uh, Second Kings chapters 22 and 23 where Hilkiah finds the book of the law and um, in the temple and he tells Shaphan and Josiah finds out and so um, he reads it to the people and that was about 600 BC you know and then in Nehemiah chapter 8 uh, we find that uh, 445 BC after the children come back um, Ezra reads the book of the law and the people started weeping in because their understanding they understood and they were conv being convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit of course and as I said before uh, 1491 BC to the which is start the Genesis until 96 AD I was for 1587 years that's from Revelation excuse me Genesis to Revelation so it was almost close to 1600 years and I have this down here as a firm foundation. If you've heard a song by Jeremy Kemp, that's a beautiful song. Uh, let's see here. And what I have here is, um, of course, you know, the uh, people who were in the background, Erasmus, uh, Martin Luther, uh, Beta, and Anglo-Saxon translations and stuff like that, Ulfius, um, the Anglo-Saxon translators and things, the kings who did it, was a preliminary until uh, Wycliffe came along and he took it and put it in English and all that and so um, you know things of that nature then you have Tyndall uh, then you have others who were doing it they were martyred persecuted burned at a stake tortured etc and uh, what it was was refining as I have here uh, so you know like purifying of silver seven seven times means complete um, and everything you know um, so uh, that's what I feel as um, is showing about the Bible for the English people also for the world and I didn't put it in here but Acts 2 really played a very large part for the Holy Bible to get to all the nations of the world and that's where all this comes in here and some countries had their own Holy Bible and if they were translated they would say the exact same thing um, I believe or very very close as to what the Holy Bible at the time said there of course you had the Bishop's Bible, Geneva Bible um, the Great Bible and all those other previous authorized Bibles not authorized so much by the King but authorized by the people authorized by the people so, um, and sometimes I guess it would be King but this Bible the King James or what I would should be calling, what we all should be calling, the Holy Bible, authorized version of 1611, is the um, all the culmination of what they were doing here. And it seems like on the other side of the scope, where where we have a firm foundation here, 1881 comes up. They would, you know, it's the English Revised Version. Then 1901 is American. Um, American Standard Version, then 1952 the Revised Standard Version, and the second one after that. Um, it's like there's no light reaching here. The glory of God's words is radiating out, and then this is the people who are trying to undermine God's word. But they see they can't do it. Those who are trying to get copyrights and stuff, uh, uh, the the uh, descent, the 
what spins off as NIV and ASB, ESV and things like that. And so they're trying to sneak up underneath where they can't, there's no one, you know, if you get up underneath a mountain sometime, nobody can really see you because they're looking outwardly. And not to say that the Word of God is not doing that, but you know, yeah, I think you understand what I mean. Uh, grace still is continuing. Um, God's Word of the day, 2013. And those who are in the light know and understand that God's Word has never been changed. It's never been revised. That's what these guys are trying to do here. And all the things they did in the past here are the Wycliffe, Tyndall, Rogers, Matthews, uh, Coverdale, all the rest of them, Beta, Erasmus, uh, Martin Luther, um, oh man, fill in the blanks from time and time on, is trying to culminate this. You can even see the word culminate in the uh, uh, translators to the readers. It can let you know all these things were coming to come into an apex, coming to a climax, coming to a zenith, a single point, you know to glorify God and his word so the word has been preserved from this time 1491 even 96 AD when it became the complete Bible um, uh, with, the, the, with the with the Jude and uh, with, with everything that Paul was involved in everything that Jude was involved in James, Peter Matthew, Mark Luke um, all those guys uh Philemon, Titus, all those Gospels of Paul, and the uh, uh, excuse me, the, the letters of Paul, and Peter, and all the rest of them, and James as well, all culminated, culminated, and even culminated more, culminated more, you know. And uh, they were tortured and burned at the stake. I kind of just repeated that again. And um, it seems to me uh, copyright false Bible agers, you know, telling to undermine God's word and the sinking sand. And the best thing they can do is try to, hey, if we're sinking, we might as well go with a flow and try to undermine God's word. But they can't. With all the copyrights they have, the bastard sons of the, I mean, it's not even related. Codex Vaticanus, uh, Alexandricus, whatever, uh, Sinaiticus, Sinaitis, whatever you want to call it, uh, Jerome's, uh, Latin Vulgate, they're not even related to the King James Bible. But all these are copycats. And they want copyrights. They have all had the same versions, the same chapters, and all everything else. They're trying to be a knockoff of this. They're trying to get money for it. But this one, even though you got to buy it, still, it doesn't have a copyright. Maybe in England, I don't know. But anyway, um, wherever the light is shining... That's a firm foundation we're standing on there. We're standing on the rock. That's Jesus Christ. And those of us who see it and know it, uh, those of us um, who don't know it, um, who, who are reading these Bible versions they're trying to make money off of, I mean, maybe they won't see it, maybe they will see it. Uh, but that's, that's why we pray for them, you know, and everything else. And not to judge these people who read these Bibles, but to help them understand and know, hey, God's true word is tied up in this right here. You know, and um, I think that's where God, very much so, that's where God preserved His Word, and um, it, it's obvious. You know, and as Joshua said, this book of the law, one word, one faith, one Lord, one Master. You know, it can't be different versions. You know, of the saint of the of the uh, of the Bible, Holy Bible. There's only has to be one version. In my opinion, is this. This is it right here. Maybe not in yours. No, that's as short as mine. But anyway, uh, hey, ask the Lord to help you understand, you know, and uh, understand these things. See if they be so. Also, Romans uh, 15, 4, how the, um, these things that are written aforetime were, um, were beneficial for our learning. Check it out.